this is a discussion about the coursework. And I think uh, I handed this out to you the first week, uh, rather early, I, I think. Um, so this is the coursework entitled, Coursework One, Report on the Initial Phase of a Campus Development. I handed this rather early, and that's because um, my intention is, in every lecture that I give you, to fill in another section, another part of the, of the coursework for you. Um, so that as we work through it, uh, as you work through it, um, you're instructed on how to do it together. Now before I start, I realize, and this has been um, brought to my attention by an observant student, that on page two, there's actually a dead link here to some supporting, some supporting documentation. And um, I will fix that and make sure that you have all the necessary, um, all the necessary uh, material you need to finish this. Um, that, that second page is actually not the actual second page in the, on, the, on the Moodle. It's different? Yeah, the second page on, on, the, on the PDF, it's not, it's not in the, the handout. It's not there. It's, uh, you, that, that's wrong. If you give us the one of the drawings, it's wrong with the size. Yeah, it's something like this. Yeah. And that doesn't exist? Yeah, yeah. you didn't exist. That is a different one. Okay. Is not so the this is the one I handed out. That is the latest version. This is, this is from Moodle. This is from Moodle. 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 Okay. I might have given you the wrong, the wrong handout. <laughs> Sorry about that. I will correct it. Fortunately, we got off to an early start, so we're, we're capable to make changes and corrections if we need to. So I will, I will make sure that that's done properly. Um, sorry about that. It substantially shouldn't change the. No, just the second should, page is missing. Yeah, this is. Yeah. Okay. The second page, you didn't do the second page. Okay, I'll have to. I don't know. It got. I have a feeling it got corrupted somehow in the upload, and I did it probably too rushed. But I can still talk through this project, um, and then to to make to give you some more background on it, and to show you what the challenge is, and and maybe give you some ideas about how to complete it. Um, so uh, this is a typical campus development and what I've asked you to do is actually work through a kind of a planning document that would be useful for the, for the fellows, the owners of the college in order that they proceed with this, um, with this particular project. And just to, to let you know, um, this is, um, okay, this is supposed to be a fictitious project. Uh, it's not that fictitious because it's taken out of real life. But it, this is the biggest project uh, that this college has ever undertaken. And it's something on the order of 45 million pounds. Um, and it's, and it's, a, it's the redevelopment of a, of a part of their campus that was occupied by some pretty crappy old buildings. There was some housing. There was, some of the housing was from the 30s. It uh, wasn't very well constructed. And they had very big gardens. So they cut the gardens in half, they knocked down some old garages and some old buildings, and fundamentally they knocked down two medium-sized dormitories, which where graduate students had been living. Um, and they slowed, and they, it's quite a long, slender site. Um, and um, the approach was, the approach taken by the college was to conduct the build in several phases. So they would, they would knock down a bunch of buildings, build housing, move people from the old buildings into the new buildings, knock down the old buildings, and then build on the second part of the site. So that actual phasing, that progressive phasing of the project is what I want you to get your head around and be able to express in a report. That's the crucial thing. So it's linking that multi-phased approach with the cash requirements. So it's the budget, which I've pretty much given you. It's that budget and the way the budget is spent and the schedule and the way the money is delivered, the way the money, money is spent. It's the timing of that that I want you to get your head around and to be able to express in a, in a report. So there's, nothing, there's no single thing that's particularly difficult about this. But it's getting everything together in one document and being able to uh, express it in a, in a way that's that can be useful as a managerial um, piece of, of, of writing. Um, and that's really what I want to conquer in this. So it's, and there's, there's yeah, go ahead. So shall we propose our opinions? Indeed, yeah. It's, it's another thing to emphasize here, that's a very good question, should you impose your own opinions? 
And I would say, if you want a good grade, make sure you're the one in control. Make sure you are managing it. It's quite clear that you're managing the schedule, you're managing the budget. So part of what I'm judging is your assertiveness, your ability to assert your managerial personality in a document. And there's actually tricks to doing that. And during the course of these lectures, I'm going to tell you some of these tricks. How you actually inform the reader that you're in control, that you're the one who's decided this. Now, those, there's, I'm sure there's some amongst you that think that there's a perfect answer, that, I, that George has the right, you know, it, back home, back at my desk, there's like a version of this, this is perfect. Um, that's, not, that's not actually true. And that's because multiple good um, solutions to this problem exist. So there's no single solution that is perfect. There's a whole series of quite good solutions to this particular project. What isn't guaranteed is that your solution will be well explained and well displayed and well illuminated and clearly written. That's what I'm judging. I'm judging your ability to get your head around fairly complicated construction project, to understand the budget, the cash flows, and to be able to work within this particular system. Now this particular system, this particular client, is rather typical of university clients. So it's not a commercial project. Um, but they have different requirements, different demands. Um, they, have, um, um, they have reasonably easy access to cheap money. They can raise funds quite easily. They have donors who are willing to write checks for half a million pounds. 200,000 pounds is not uncommon for a donation to this particular college. This particular college has an endowment in excess of 100 million pounds. And, um, but they're conservative. It's a 400, 500 year old, maybe it's even older than that. 800, yeah. Seven, yeah seven, I was at the 750th anniversary of this college. So it's in excess of 750 years old. It's one of the oldest institutions in Europe. It's the oldest continually, continuously functioning institutions in Europe. So they, they can borrow money. No, people trust that they're going to repay the money. Um, they also have donors. But what they don't like, and they're rather, it's, as you can understand, the college is run by rather conservative um, academics and uh, administrators, you know, ac university administrators. So they, they don't like surprises. They like to know, they like to know um, what's going to happen in two months' time, in five months' time. They want to know, they don't want to be shown a bill for a million and a half pounds from a concrete um, frame company, for having just poured off. They, they, they want to know in advance what's happening. And that's what they're relying on you to do. They're relying on you to deliver that information. So if you're a week late, uh, if, you're a week, if, you, if you misjudge the payment by a week, it's not a disaster. If you don't submit the schedule in time, that's not considered good. So they want to know, they want, to, they want you to be planning, they want a planning document in place. They understand that things might change as the project, maybe there's a big hailstorm or the electricity is out or something like this. Um, so it's kind of disaster management, trust management? Indeed. Um, now there is another, ideally these would be combined with, there's a second phase, a second part to this particular assignment, which is the risk aspect of it. So I'm asking you to do a full risk assessment. So just for the purposes of this evaluation, we've actually separated these two. Yes. So uh, after setting up our project program, OK, which is the, the third uh, point, then you ask us to uh, provide a budget report, then to perform a cash flow evaluation. Indeed. Uh, so the cash flow evaluation depends on our program, right? Indeed. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. And it, 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 it depends on certain realities. It depends on the types of contracts you have with your contractors. Even this, we have to state this, the type of the contract. You don't have to state the type of the contract, but you should be aware that, that your obligation to pay has to do with their fulfilling the contract. Because it will affect the cash flow. Indeed. So, if they, so you have to build that, you have to be able to state that. If, this, if there is a failure on one part, now usually, 
companies have a, uh, usually have a working practice where they withhold something like it's written in, it's written into the contract um, that they withhold a certain amount of of final payment until until they go through a, a check to make sure everything is 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 properly done. So that that should be a a a an aspect. It shouldn't dominate your cash flow, but it is it is something to realize. Yeah, Indeed. Is there a time limit to like a date set on the on this? Um, the, I know obviously it yeah. means uh, the project itself is never. Indeed, it does. Yeah, and that's stated here. Exactly. Yes, indeed. And and it's it's quite a good question because with university um, university projects are different from others. Universities and schools because they have these strict deadlines. Mm -hmm. If it's not done by September, it's going to stay empty for a year because they rent rooms out. For undergraduates, they rent rooms out for the entire year. So they can't very easily rent something in October or November because everyone will have a room already. Um, graduates are a different case. They, but for the, for the undergraduates, if it's not ready by September they have these, or, or, or December, they have some really strict deadlines. And often there are penalties associated with missing the deadline. I'm sorry? I said not for Bristol. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. They screwed it up? <laughs> they screwed it up. Yeah. 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 Um, well, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy to report that for this, for this particular project, um, the construction company, um, you know, it met, it met the deadline for this, this present September. There was a bunch of buildings that, I, well, I went by it on my bike and they were open. So it was done by a very good company called BAM. Anyone can get a job there. Construction. Yeah, BAM Construction. They've done some amazing buildings here, um, some really complicated projects, and they've, yeah, they've they've, they've kind of, they've kind of. This was their first major uh, CLT project, uh, and they've done some really impressive concrete. Yeah, very good company. Well, last point, which is the financial analysis yeah. of the thing. I, I'm an architect, so. I really don't have any background <laughs> on the financial analysis or even what is the internal rate of return and you you learn that stuff. So a financial analysis has to do with um, it has to do with even though it's a not for profit organization, you, you it is exactly this you're exactly the same exactly the right person who this assignment was designed for. I designed this project with you in mind. And that is because um, I think there's a basic understanding of finance that everyone should have. And, and this assignment covers that. So you don't have to, it's not a particularly in-depth, but it's a, you have to have a basic principle of what's going on. Now the, the pr I mean, shall we show it in graphs? Indeed, you show it in graphs. Now the basic principle is that the, um, over a long term period, these projects should be kind of self-funding. In other words, the income from the rents has to has to justify the in, in, in investment. So the university is putting 40 or 40, nearly 50 million into this. Over the next 20 or 30, 40 years, they want to receive that money back. They want to show that they're not subsidizing for infinity this a group of students. They want to actually show that this is a this will be eventually a cost positive contribution to the universe, to the college budget. So the, 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 sorry, the cash flow will just be the running project and Indeed. The, the actual analysis will extend past that. Indeed it will, exactly. yeah. It's I mean, I've, I've limited it somewhat. I've, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to make you guys miserable, but I have limited it to the term, a fixed term of the, of the loan, I believe I said it out. Yeah, there's a, I think they, they borrowed money on a, I can't remember how many years. Yeah, yeah. So, so the financial analysis is limited to that time scale. Now, colleges and universities are a bit unusual. They don't have to make a profit. In fact, if they make a profit, it's usually, you know, a mistake. Um, but what they do have to do is to justify to their donors and to the people that manage their endowment that they're using the money wisely. So it's it's quite reasonable that they subsidize student housing. They subsidize other aspects of college life. Why not housing? It's just that they want to know the extent of that subsidy. They want to know how much they're. They want. They want to know how much they're they're offering as part of their educational um, services. 
They don't mind giving money away. They just want to know how much they're giving away and who they're giving it to. They want, them, they want to give the money to the people who they want to give the money to. They want the beneficiaries to be the students. So actually they have, the students themselves have a fixed, um, at the University of Oxford they actually have a fixed, um, they agreed amongst themselves to have a fixed increase every year, which is fairly modest. So they go up only at, at, a, at a reasonable, they don't go up at full market rates. Um, other aspects of the income, like if they, if they rent the hall out to a, a wedding or a, a, con a concert or something like that, that, that they, they, they follow the market rents for that. But for the students, they, they give a special dispensation. Give it a shot. I mean, it's the only way you're going to get through something like this. And I'm really sorry about the mix-up between the different versions. I will sort this out and, and distribute via email uh, the correct version, and I'll up, upload that with a notification and an apology. But I think fun, fundamental. I think there's a few things missing. But fundamentally, the document, the, the assignment is the same. I don't think any of the major parameters have been changed. Any other questions? I'm going to stop. Thank you. Thank you for your attention.